What's up guys, Johnny Fly here. Welcome back. Today I'm bringing you my first impressions of the Fat Shark Shark Bite system. All right, first things first, jumping right into it, I gotta tell you that the Shark Bite system by Fat Shark, to me personally, is probably one of the most exciting new developments we've had in racing in a while. Other things I, I think that come to mind is obviously we have the TBS Tracer, the Immersion RC Go systems coming out, bringing 2.4 gigahertz low latency racing. That's really exciting. I think this is more exciting. Um, not since I get to like the 20 by 20 stacks, the Akon AK32 pin, when that came out, that was a big boom for racing, bringing lighter weight quads, high performing 20 by 20 ESCs. Uh, the Tattoo 3.0 R-Line, when that first came out, to me, that was a big jump in battery technology. That was really exciting. Again, to me, this is even more exciting. All right, so now that I said that, and obviously I'm super pumped, and I love this system, I'm a big fan of using it, it's not a perfect system, right? And I think a lot of people have come into it and saying, you know, they got the DJI FPV system, and now they're trying this thing, and they look at the images, and they compare the two, and they go, wow, DJI looks so much better, who cares, this thing's a piece of junk. And let me just get straight to the chase. If you look at the picture out of the DJI quad, it is absolutely incredible. When you first try DJI FPV, it is a just an earth shattering type experience. If you used to analog, you put that thing on, it almost doesn't look real. It looks like someone took a, a static picture from a GoPro, slapped it in your goggles and said, this is the new system. You're like, ah, there's no way it could fly and yet you can fly with it. It's absolutely incredible. And I feel like if you're a pilot looking to do, you know, just general freestyle flying around trees, you know, bandos is actually really, really great in. Um, Cine whooping is absolutely incredible with the uh, DJI system. All those systems, DJI is absolutely fantastic. And, and I think if that's what you're focused on um, unless money's a concern and you already have HDOs or HDO2s go the DJI route that's gonna give you the better picture quality of that experience however when it comes to racing in my personal opinion DJI is not there so right now the weight that you have to put on your quad for DJI is quite a bit the latency you get when you're flying is quite a bit the hassles of handling a race where there's DJI pilots there is quite you know quite annoying you have to worry about how far are you gonna put the DJI pilots from other pilots no matter how far I put them there's always a little bit of interference that I can't quite get rid of you have to worry about how far are they away from the timing system because there's transmitting from the goggles that can actually trip the timing system for me personally when I was racing um, as fast as I could with DJI and then going back to my analog system I was seeing up to a two second difference per lap in something where I was doing 13 flat on my analog system and 15 flat on my DJI system. I had a lot of fun doing DJI. I'd love to be racing DJI versus DJI for fun, but it's not that thing to bring the next level of racing where analog pods are gonna want to adopt to it and give up that speed and those other issues and let alone all the issues running races timing system issues, uh, DVR issues, etc. Fast Shark Shark Bite to me is what makes a lot of sense for racing. Shark Bite basically says, I'm not gonna transmit from the goggles. You don't have to worry about how close or how far you're away from other, uh, other pilots. You don't have to bind your receiver to your transmitter. That means that whatever's being transmitted can be picked up by anybody. There's no two-way communication that DJI depends on. In addition to that, because it's a one-way transmission from the, T the VTX to the RX, you could have multiple receivers all picking up exactly the same system. Something you can't quite do with DJI. You get different pictures if you're in spectator mode versus actually flying. Here, it's all the same. So what that means is from a race director standpoint, I can have a system set up for timing, for review, for live streaming, using my own receivers completely separate from the pilot. Pilots can have their own and we're getting the exact same picture. So that's really exciting from that standpoint. 
Additionally, because it works more like a traditional VTX, which is putting out constant levels of power, etc., it's picked up a lot more easily from the timing system. So we're getting win, win, win. Now, like I said, this is only a first impression video. So I'm not giving you my thorough analysis of how I've been enjoying this thing, how I've been flying it, and what the lap times and all that kind of stuff's been. So far, I haven't had it that long, uh, but while I've had it, I've only been flying it in this thing right here. This is the Tiny Trader by 533. I absolutely love this little quad. This quad here, as you can see, it looks the same as an analog quad, oh except Sharkbite is actually inside of it. So the really nice thing about Sharkbite is they have a whoop style board that fits right on top of the whoop style board you have for the flight controller and ESC inside this guy. And you have a nice compact, well-controlled build where you're not worrying about things getting hurt and broke because it's all contained in there really, really nice. Plus it keeps the whole thing nice and light. It's slightly heavier than an analog system, but really you can almost can't tell the difference. So to me, this is a huge win for this system that goes really, really well on micros. And given that we're just getting the season started up out here I know it, you know we're in short sleeves it's 50 degrees out here in Michigan so you know thanks for the warm weather starting to roll in spring is coming uh, but this is how I've been able to test it so far just out here in the backyard the great thing I love about this particular quad is it's a little bit heavier than a traditional three inch micro but what it actually ends up doing is because it's a little bit heavier for its power it behaves a little bit more like a heavier five inch quad so what we can do is I can take a small area like this my backyard and translate it to where it feels almost like you're flying a bigger quad. If I fly some of my other micros, they're lighter and more nimble and actually faster, but they fly very different because they bounce around so much, they're so nimble. This thing, not so much. It's a little bit more planted, a little bit more stable, a little bit more of like flying a bigger quad. So I really enjoy this thing for practicing, getting ready for that five inch season. I've already said I love it. I've said it's great but it's not a perfect system. Like I said, if you look at the picture quality, to me, it's a huge step up from analog. I know that comparing the DVRs, if you looked at them online, it may not look like that big of a difference sometimes to people. There's a few things going on. One, the DVR, it has to convert to a digital signal from what you're seeing here. So what you're seeing is better, is being recompressed into that image that, that we get to store, and then we put it into a video, we upload it to Facebook or YouTube, it gets re-encoded again and gets made even worse. So there's a couple of levels going on that's actually degrading that quality for you. But what I'm showing you here is, I'm showing you what it looks like when I'm flying analog out here versus when I'm flying the SharkBite system. Now all the footage you're seeing from SharkBite is actually flying the Foxeer Digisite system, which to me is the best option for uh, racing in particular for shark bite. It's a little bit more of a wide field of view, still not wide enough to me, but it's a little bit wider than the run cam system. And therefore it just gives me that best quality that I want for racing. But as you compare this and that, again, remember that this is not the best quality DVR. To me, even in the DVR, there's a night and day difference. Now, putting up real quick the DJI system next to it, you can see it's, it's a different level of quality. We know that, right? But the experience when flying this, I can tell you that when I fly analog and I fly Foxy or Digisite on SharkBite, I notice no difference in terms of latency. They feel exactly the same to me. Now, I'm not saying that there isn't a difference, just so far on tiny trainers, I don't notice a difference. Now, will that be the case when I break it out to five inch racing outdoors? I don't know. Five inch racing, maybe there's a little bit more added latency and I'll notice it, but right now it's really, really encouraging. When I fly DJI out here, I can tell there's a difference no matter what I'm doing. You can feel that latency. And to me, that's a big win for Shark Bite. So keeping it lightweight, being very compatible at 25 milliwatt, really low latency and a huge increase in picture quality, I'm super pumped and excited. Now let's talk a little bit about some of the cons to the, to the Shark Bite system or things that I'm not the biggest fan of. First and foremost, this feels like an afterthought, right? I mean, obviously it probably is an afterthought. I don't think this existed when the goggles first existed. Now the issue that I ran into personally is the way that this attaches on the top, you actually pull out the screws for the fan cover, you put this thing on top of it and you put the screws back in. That's okay, I guess, is a little hinge and like at least it attaches. But when you look at the bottom side, you actually be going in here a lot if you want that footage. So what ends up happening is underneath this cable here, you actually have the SD card. And you can't even get to that SD card inside the goggle because it's blocked by the cable. So you gotta pull the cable out, then get to the SD card, then put it back in. So that's annoying, and I don't understand why they didn't put the SD card over here so I can get to it. But the bigger issue with this is that when I put the SD card in for the first time, I pushed it, not holding the back side, and it actually ripped all four screws out of this top side, and I stripped all the screws from my fan cover. Those screws are not enough to keep this thing on the goggle, and that better solution should have been found, especially when it breaks in the first time you try to do something that, that you're gonna be doing all the time. So from now on, I always make sure I hold the other side as I'm going, you know, getting the SD card, putting it back in, as I'm putting the HDMI cable back in and taking it out. 
Now, what I ended up doing to solve this problem is inside here, I actually put a bunch of 3M VHB, the two-sided tape that I use in all my quad belts. That thing sticks like crazy. And now with that tape there, I can push all I want and it's not going anywhere. I really feel like a solution with some sort of adhesive would have been better from Fat Shark. They could do the top part, but also add the adhesive. Recommend you put the adhesive, put it on there. So again, it's not a perfect system, it's a little bit ugly but at least it's not gonna rip pieces off your goggle. So that, that's a little bit disappointing. I wish they did better there. Second thing, to me, I talked about if you're looking at, you know, freestyle, cine whooping, a lot of these other cases, to me, DJI is a far better choice for you. Now, when it comes to racing, personally, I think 4-3 is the aspect ratio that we want as racers. We do a lot of pitch changes and having the maximum vertical field of view is really, really important to us. 4-3 support inside a shark bite is awful. So borderline, it didn't work at all previously uh, before this latest version. The current version works sorta, kinda, almost kinda. Um, the cameras aren't made for it. Both the run cam and the Fox Sierra system, when you go from 16.9 to 4.3, it crops in. What I'm used to seeing or what I wanna see in a camera that can switch is when you go to 4.3, it gets taller. When you go to 16.9, it crops it down. If you think about the way a, a lens works and the image applies to the sensor, it's a circle, right? So if you can already fit 16 by nine, you should be able to fit a taller image if you bring it in a little bit on the width of 169. It should be able to be taller, give us a bigger field of view, and that's what we want to see. So as it is, in order to get a proper 4.3 image from me, the best way that I've found is actually running the 4.3 crop mode on the goggles. And 4.3 will chop off the two ends, show a 4.3 picture inside my HDOs, and now I get that 4.3 image I want, but the field of view does not match what I want for racing. If you compare the footage I have of analog versus uh, shark bite, you can see that it's a lot wider with analog. To me, that helps me get a little bit closer to obstacles, pull a little bit tighter maneuvers, and be a little bit faster around the track. I want an option from, you know, Shark Bite, from Fox Sierra, from Run Cam, where I can get that better picture quality. All right, so next point. When you get a Shark Bite system, you do not get anything in terms of manuals, how it works, how to use it, how to wire it you get nothing, you are totally on your own. This is especially true when you get the, the VTX. Personally, I really like the TX5S.1, which is the Whoop style board. But in that board, you have no directions on where to solder. You have no directions on what the input range is for voltages. You aren't told what the TX and RX thing is, how it's set up. There's no instructions at all. If you contrast that to the DJI system, you get everything you could ever need. And even then you really don't need it with DJI. It's just so simple. You know exactly where everything goes. You know how to wire it up. If you don't, there's great documentation to help you out. So that's a place where Fat Shark to me really needs to step up their game. People who are coming into this system, it's just, it's a really intimidating system they got to clean that up, especially for me. I didn't know what the voltage input could be. I'd love to have 6S, 6S input voltage, but I don't know if it'll blow up. I have no idea. What I do know is that I'm running it off 3S, which is what I'm running on my tiny trainer, and that works great in that board, but I don't know what else works. And just shark bite, you know, fat shark, you got to do a better job bringing that out to us. Another really big issue that I want to bring up is I really like the TX5S.1 board. But what actually happens is if you look at the location of the capacitors on the board, on the back side of the board where you put the little screw nut on, there's capacitors really close to that screw pole. And what I did my very first build is when I put that nut on the end, it actually rubbed up against the capacitor and I didn't realize and it knocked it off the board. The board still functioned but I feel like it's not functioning as well as it could because that capacitor is missing. They can't put things that close to the edge. There's room on other parts of the board. They should have spread it out a little bit more. It'd be a more reliable product and I, I really want to see them do that going forward. Uh, now the good news is I did have a second TX5S.1. I ended up putting that in. And all I did differently is I just didn't put the nut on the back. Then it's totally not a problem. Um, but they need to do better. In general, what I've noticed with SharkBite is hugely promising. I absolutely love using it. I think it's fantastic for racing. I notice as I'm flying here in the backyard, I can see things so much easier. Uh, one of the key things is I actually have some black uh, pop-up gates that I'm using. I'm using those very uh, specifically for a reason. When I fly my analog systems, those are super hard to see. The black color just blends right in. They're not very thick, they're hard to see. So I wanted to try them with the SharkBite system. When I fly SharkBite, I have no issues picking those things out at all. I can see them from a great distance. It gives me way more confidence flying. If you watch on my analog footage, you'll see that I hit some of those gates quite a bit because I can't tell where they are until it's too late. Versus when I'm flying shark bite, I don't think I ever hit that second gate doing that right hand turn 
because I always knew where it was because I could see it. And that to me is a huge advantage when it comes to racing. I can't wait to get out there and fly with other guys where I can see those quads. I've done quite a bit of chase footage with the DJI system following race quads and being able to see that quad on the field is just so incredible. It's a whole different level of racing. It feels like a whole new experience and I want more and more of those opportunities coming to racing. So to me, I feel like Shark Bite's getting there. I need more support from Fat Shark coming out to race directors, coming out working with racers, getting it adopted so we can have more pilots out here flying it. And I think it's gonna be an incredible experience racing. We just have to get to the point where we have, you know, pilots actually using it and then race directors really supporting it. Right now in a little bit of a, a chicken or egg situation, there's a lot of focus being done on DJI because we have so many new guys coming into DJI, which I think is fantastic. Again, if you're getting started flying, you wanna go out and fly probably freestyle first, DJI is the way to go, it's amazing. And those guys wanna take those systems and come out to racing. And it's causing a lot of trouble and we're spending a lot of effort trying to make it work, or at least work as well as we can. And I'm all for doing that too. But at the same time, nobody's really focusing on shark bite. And to me, that's where we gotta start pushing. And I can't wait to start trying to race this thing seriously. Uh, as soon as it warms up a little bit and we get our feel ready to go, we'll be ready to do some five inch racing. I plan on putting this system in a five inch racer, bringing that out, doing some lap time comparisons, seeing how it goes analog to, to shark bite. I can't wait to try it out at the field again. It's worked amazing here in the backyard, amazing on my tiny trainer, and uh, I'm super excited for it. So anyway, those are my first impressions. Let me know if you've tried shark bite. Do you like it? Do you see the, the value in that difference? Um, are you just holding off and not even interested? In it? I really wanna hear from you guys because I think this is really exciting. Hopefully you guys too. And uh, hopefully I'll bring you some more shark bite and uh, GGI content in the future. And as always, I'll catch y'all later. Peace.